Hi, and welcome to Mimetic Theory 101. Today is our second class, and we're going to be talking about scapegoating. And today we are at the Cook County Courthouse in Skokie, Illinois. Skokie is a suburb of Chicago. Now, if you remember, in our first class, we discussed the three principles of mimetic theory. The first one is that desire is mimetic. That means that we influence one another to desire certain objects. The second part of the theory that we're going to be talking about today is the scapegoat mechanism. And the third part of the theory is that this is all revealed mimetic theory, mimetic desire, the scapegoat mechanism. This is all revealed in the biblical text. So, today we're talking about the scapegoat mechanism. Now, if you remember from last class, I brought up the Jones family. That phrase that we have in the United States that goes, keeping up with the Joneses. So what I did was I showed you around my living room. My two couches, my tube television that we bought six years ago. And then we went out my door and I showed you our garage. And inside of our garage is our 1999 Honda Civic that works really well. And then I went to the front of our house and showed you that our house is a three bedroom, two bath house built in the late 1950s. And we're very happy with our house. So I went around our neighborhood and showed you the other houses and they're all basically cookie cutter houses they were all built in the 1950s and they all look pretty much the same until we get to the Jones family house and the Jones family house was built in 2006 it's a brick house it's huge it's got six bedrooms four baths And then I showed you the Jones family garage. And I told you that inside the Jones family garage, there's a brand new Lexus. And I told you that when I saw Mr. Jones moving in, he was carrying a big screen, flat screen television. All of these material objects that the Jones family have started to make me feel a bit jealous. But the important thing to know is that it's not about the material objects. It's not about the material goods that the Jones family has. What is it about? It's really about Mr. Jones. I want to keep up with Mr. Jones because I have allowed Mr. Jones to define for me what success is. And success, according to what I think of Mr. Jones, is keeping up with what Mr. Jones has. So I go out and I buy the house. I go out and I buy the television. I go out and I buy the Lexus so that I can keep up with Mr. Jones. And for a moment, these material goods make me feel somewhat successful. Make me feel good about myself. But then, Mr. Jones goes out and he buys a boat. And I think, man, a boat would be so nice to have during these Chicago summers. And then Mr. Jones goes out and he buys a riding lawnmower. And I think, wow, I've always wanted a riding lawnmower. And so I'm constantly feeling like I have to keep up with Mr. Jones to make me feel good about myself. Now, I can't keep up with Mr. Jones because there are so many obstacles in my way namely money, I can't afford it. So these obstacles that get in my way only make me desire to be like Mr. Jones even more. It makes the myth that I've constructed about Mr. Jones even more desirable to be. So what's a guy to do? Well, what I end up doing is I try to knock Mr. Jones down from the pedestal that I have erected for him. 
I end up gossiping about the Jones family to my other neighbors. I end up trying to scapegoat them. I try to turn all of my neighbors against Mr. Jones. So I'll end up saying, hey, the Jones family, they're not like us. They think they're better than us. Just look at their house. It's brand new, more expensive. And so I start to turn my neighbors against them. I tell my neighbors that the Jones family, what's the word that we use these days? They're elitist. They're, they think they're better than us. And I start to other rumors too. I say, did you see the way that the Jones parent their children? They left their six-year-old daughter out in their driveway unsupervised riding her tricycle. They are horrible parents. And I'll say, did you see the way that Mrs. Jones was driving out of her driveway? She was going so fast. And the way that she was driving down our residential streets, she was going 35 miles an hour. What if one of our children were out there playing? She could have run them over. All of this is meant to turn my neighbors against the Jones family. It's meant to, to knock them off of the pedestal that I have erected for them. And it's important to know that the Jones family is completely innocent in this whole process of scapegoating. They don't deserve this. And if I'm successful, what this will mean is that the Jones family will feel so uncomfortable in our neighborhood that they will be forced to leave. They will become outcasts in our neighborhood. So, why are we here at the courthouse? Well, the court system, our judicial system, is meant to limit the violence that we can use against one another. And the violence against, against the Jones family was outcasting them, was making them feel so uncomfortable that they had to leave. I mean, gossip is violence enough, but that takes it to another note. So the courthouse is meant to limit our violence and limit our gossip. You've heard of the phrase defamation of character. That's, that's a lawsuit meant to limit the gossip that we can use against other people. But the court system does all of this imperfectly. That is, it doesn't stop our violence. It doesn't stop our gossip. What we need to do that is a different way of living our lives. And mimetic theory states that that different way of living our lives is seen in the biblical text. And we'll go through that next time. I hope you join me.